So depending on what you've studied in the course already, you're probably pretty good at exercise intensity already. Um, and I'm going to sort of introduce you. Well, I guess I'm not introducing you. You probably know more about it than I do uh, to technology that's specifically used for that. So let's just name them first of all. We have a HR monitor. We've mentioned those a couple of times in previous tutorials, if you've taken those tutorials already. Uh, we here have got a smartwatch. I don't own one, so you know you guys might find some holes in my particular thinking about these things, if you do own one. We're also here, I've got the Strava app here, let me name it Strava specifically. We're talking here about apps and online services which can help us to measure intensity and how we're performing. And here, of course, we've got smartphones. So, you know, you basically your mobile, that's what we're talking about, and we call it a smartphone. So. A lot of these have overlap. We should we should stress that, and I've obviously I've, I've shown like a health app on this particular one. But a lot of these things have overlap. But I want to go through some fundamental principles of each one. So heart rate monitor. Typically, it's a belt and a watch. So it doesn't have to be belt and watch. It doesn't have to be because sometimes a belt will connect with your phone. It will connect with uh, a piece of fitness equipment or whatever it happens to be. It really is specifically about measuring intensity through heart rate. Now that goes without saying, but you guys of course started to sort of study the ranges of heart rate expression for things like aerobic training, anaerobic training, and so on and so on. So this allows us to be very specific. And the thing I like particularly about the, um, about the heart rate monitor is it's convenient. Okay, and I really want to put that point in there. It's convenient. Why is it convenient? Because it's there on the wrist. You could be running on a treadmill covered in sweat. You turn your wrist towards you. There's your feedback. There's your feedback. So it's brilliant for what we would call feedback during performance. We can call it concurrent feedback if you want to get really technical about it. But it's really good for feedback during the performance. Now, a smartwatch, you could make all the same arguments. But it does more, it does more than a heart rate monitor, okay? So it's not just about measuring heart rate, which of course it does, but it allows you to get to information. Why? Because in essence, it's online. This allows it to be comparative. This also allows it to store information and it will help you find trends. Now, I know this is different to your smartphone, but those trends are really, really important. It also covers, not just when you're exercising, but it also covers your rest your recovery. It also, as you probably know, because it gives you feedback on your sleep. So it will give you that, but again, the key factors there, uh, feedback as you're performing, but also as a summary after you're performing. Now, in most cases, a smartwatch can do everything that a heart rate monitor can, can do, unless that heart rate monitor does something really, really specific. What we would say, however, is that this one is more accurate. Why? Because the monitor is just below the chest. This is monitoring at your brachial artery. Nothing wrong with that, but it depends on the quality of the sensor. Now, I said before, I've got the apps down here, and I've used Strava. Originally set up as a cycling app that can be used for all kinds of uh, sport and activity. And what it does is it's absolutely brilliant for tracking. Now, I'm not saying to use Strava as the best. You might know of a better one. It's, I know it quite well. And it will, it will track things like records. It will provide things to you like your split time. So if you go for a run or a cycle, it'll tell you your splits. It'll tell you your ranking. So, you know, if I'm cycling um, a local hill on the hog's back, that's near where I live, and I'm wondering, you know, how fast is the fastest person ever been up that hill on their bike? I can try and get as close to that as I can and do it that way. The also, I really think these things are fantastic for historical, historical records. And these could be personal or indeed community. And you can know exactly how much work you've done in a week, in a month, in a year, this year compared to last during the pandemic to not during the pandemic. They're really fantastic for allowing us to do that. And of course, that gives us a measure of intensity. And finally, with our smartphone, I think the first thing to say about smartphones are is that it's basically, apart from younger children, it's everyone. Now, I don't mean to exclude anyone that doesn't have a smartphone, but the point is that these are in the hands of 90% of people in this country. Therefore, they're really convenient. They're really useful when you look at things like health apps. And those health apps, a bit like our smartwatches, and often obviously connect to our smartwatches, they do all kinds of things for us. I also think because obviously the processor is better in here, it gives information on nutrition. It gives information even on lifestyle. Let's say um, how much water you drink, for example. But let's go back to the intensity point. It will act as your pedometer. 
counting your steps, I'm sure you know this, it will also measure intensity, intensity via, and that via is either going to be your old smartwatch, your, your online app, or your heart rate monitor. And of course, it's your phone that's going to record those things. So that they are some of the ways, certainly by no means all, that technology can help to measure exercise intensity. And I'm sure you're pretty familiar with some of them.